Okay, so what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna do a code review for ABL. It's gonna be very, very similar to our binary search tree, obviously since it is a binary search tree, but I really wanna kind of focus in on the ABL functions themselves, that being the get height, get node factor, not get factor, get the balance factor, those for being nodes, and then also I kind of want to touch on the insert and removal differences and then obviously go through the rotations and overall balancing the tree in general. So we're going to go and dive into those real quick. So let me swap over to our code. It's back to VS Codeium again. Uh, I think, yeah, it's going to start just as usual with the node because there is one difference and that's going to be that we're storing the height. We do this just to make things a lot easier on ourselves. Now, it is a little bit expensive in terms of memory to store this integer for every single node. And if we're only storing, like, say, 20 or so nodes, that, that's only, like, say, what, 80 bytes or something? Not that much. When you get to a lot of data when you're storing, like, millions of nodes, that's going to add up. But I genuinely think that the footprint here is minimal enough that it really does just actually benefit itself in the end by storing the actual node so you don't have to compute it every single time that you want to actually do a rotation or whatnot. Now we do have a helper function of get height and that is to handle null pointers and we'll get into that in just a bit. But for now, I think the node.cpp is the same thing, it's just getting the degrees, that's for deletions. We did that in the binary search tree video that I'll be linked below, but for now, Main crux is we are going to look at our AVL class here. Now, right off the bat, there is one difference in the AVL.h, and that is the fact that I am using algorithm here. I'm using this because I was very lazy and I did not feel like writing my own uh, max function, even though it is literally one line of code. I'd rather just do this and use SED colon colon max call it a day. Uh, I think it's a little bit cleaner, but it prevents me from having to write an additional function and have it in the class and all that good stuff. It, I was honestly just being lazy. So if you want to do it and write your own function and not have to import something else, it's up to you. Both well, both ways work. But if we look at it, this should be familiar for all of our private recursive functions. And then these are our public functions that are just single calls. Not a big deal, but it's gonna be these right here. The get height, get balance factor, right rotate, left rotate, and balance tree. They all take in a node, and they're gonna do something with that node. But for now, let's go ahead and move on to see them. So again, here's our deconstructor and the recursive call. Our insert and its recursive call. If you wanna look over what these do, I highly suggest going back to the binary search tree video. I have an entire review there, so you can actually see what's going on. But for insert, we want to look at these two lines here. So we set our node's height to max the child, children height plus one. So our node is going to have two children, no matter what. Now whether there's actually data in those children is to be determined. So I think real quick, I wasn't planning on doing TL draw stuff here, but and again, this is directly from the binary search tree you can still see it so real quick let me just delete all of this just real quick and let me see if I can find my stylus here it is there's my stylus so if we look at it let's just um treat it like a circle okay and then I want to say okay I've got a value of 50 in the circle it is going to have two potential children on the left one on the right now if we are at a null pointer, which is what we have here, there's not pointing anything, these are guaranteed to have heights of negative one. So the way that we get the height of 50 in this case is we look at it and we say get height node left, get height node right. We're gonna get the maximum value between these two nodes. Maximum value here is negative one because both of them are negative one, not a big deal. And then we add a single one to it, giving us a height of zero. So all of our leaves, which is the bottom values of our uh, binary search tree, is going to have a height of zero because all the null pointers will have heights of negative one. Not a big deal. So what happens if we do actually insert some data here? 
just uh, I clean that up really it's gonna be 50 let me actually um, wow that's not the eraser tool let me do the actual official arrows because they're actually pretty good they uh, they link together so if I want to click this and drag this around and drags it with it definitely gonna use that when we get to the rotations in a bit but for now I don't know why it doesn't change my cursor but just ignore that so I insert a 40 here okay so real quick um I'm gonna drag this up a little bit oh I didn't group them whoops me I don't want to group the arrow just these so if I group that can I right click that yes I can cool okay so we group these I'm gonna click and drag that a little bit further up just so I can represent it a little bit better as so a group here we go okay so again this is gonna point to null these are gonna point to null not a big deal so our height of 40 is the maximum value of this and this is going to be negative 1 and then we will add 1 to it so 40 has a height of 0 and then 50 to get its height we want to get the height of the two children the height of its left child is 0 the height of its right child is negative 1 so we end up going for the height of the left child which is 0 and we add 1 to it so 50 will have a height of 1 so one way that we can just do something very very quick and dirty um, to determine the height just at a glance at least the way that I like to determine the height of binary search trees let's just come here do a bunch of the um, maybe a little bit annoying actually you know what I'm not even gonna do it it's gonna do it even even sloppier just a circle a circle a circle a circle a circle 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 and circle so boom 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 bam bam okay binary search tree this one AVL I'm not gonna look at the balance factors here because even if it is unbalanced it's not gonna be a huge ordeal um, actually no I'll just do this and, and then this and I think that should be pretty balanced I'm I'm very sure it's balanced but again it doesn't really matter so we know that these are our leaves, very bottom nodes. So they guarantee they're all gonna have a height of zero, right? I know that this looks really sloppy. Um, I'm gonna do a line through the zeros just to make sure that it looks like they're actually zeros and not another nodes. So these are all zeros. And the way I look at it is if you want to get the height, it's gonna be the number of traversals it takes to you for you to get from your current node to the bottom the maximum number of that so if we look at the actual negative ones here you see since we take this x amount going in a negative direction or positive direction here going downwards then it's going to be a positive value and it's going to take one traversal up from our null pointer so that still actually holds up mathematically i just think that's pretty cool but this, I mean, if we do the math here, the right child has a height of negative one because it doesn't exist. The height of the left child has zero. So we get the max of that, zero plus one. So this is a height of one. It would take one traversal to get to that. This is a little bit different. This is gonna take us one, two, three to get to its bottom one. So I'm saying that this is going to have a height of three this is going to have a height of 2. This obviously has a height of 0. This is going to have a height of 1. 1, 2. These aren't negatives. I'm just kind of spacing it out. 3, and then find the root, which have a 4. So if we just look at it, this is going to be choosing between negative 1 and 0. Obviously, 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Its child has a maximum value of 1 plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus one is four, so we know the root's gonna have four. This is zero, but if we look at this, this particular one here, it's a pretty good one to look at. It has a left child that has a height of zero, and a right child that has a height of one. Obviously we're gonna choose that one, we're gonna add one to it, and it gets us two. And here we have three, has a left child of one, right child of two, 
We're going to choose 2 because it's the maximum value. 2 plus 1 is 3. Choose between both of these 3, you're going to get 3, obviously. 3 plus 1 is going to be 4. So just as a very quick way of looking at it, if you want to label the height of a tree, you can just count the path that it's on, like on the subtree. How long is the longest path it would take to get to a leaf? Obviously, the leaves are already there, so they have a height of zero. The ones one away from it are going to have a height of one because it's just one traversal away. It's going to be in particular like this, this two right here, because if you look at it, it's like, oh, this might have a height of one, but no, this is a longer path, so its height is going to be two. So that's the really, really quick way of trying to find heights. Obviously, there is a formula, and that is the maximum value between two nodes, children, plus one. So we have an actual formula for it, we have code for it, but there's kind of a better, easier way that we as humans can analyze the tree just at a visual glance. So I think that's pretty cool. But once we do the node height and set that, then we are going to call balance tree on our node that we just inserted, and it's going to check everything in the balance aspect of that node make sure that it's balanced in the tree if it's not then it's going to cause some rotations we'll get to that later for now let's move to remove that's going to be almost identical to the bst as a matter of fact everything in the beginning checking if it's empty checking if the null node is null traversing down the left and the right trees finding the data choosing between zero one two degree deletions all of that is the same However, just like insert, we have two lines of code to look at. Instead of dealing with the node we just deleted, we're going to set the roots height because things are going to have obviously changed because we deleted a node. That is going to potentially alter things. So we set the root height and call balance tree on the root. So that's the only difference that we do here. Removal balances from the root because you're deleting data. Not a big deal. So zero degree, one degree, and two degree deletions, all pretty much identical to the BST video. Not really gonna go over it too much. Here, get height. So this is where we get those negative ones. So when we get height, if the node is null, height is going to be negative one. That is to not break and get sec vaults when we try to actually call the actual height when we determine balance factors, height of actual nodes, we need to actually have some case for whenever we check a child that doesn't exist. It's gonna have negative one because again, mathematically, if we actually count as distance from the leaves, and if you look at uh, distance in the opposite direction as a negative value, this takes one traversal going down, this empty null right here is gonna take one traversal going up, which is the opposite direction, so I have negative one. So again, it does work out mathematically. Now, that being said, we just use this as a helper function to handle the negative one, and then just to get the node height. We already have that stored, so we just have to return it. Not a big deal. Now get balance factor. That is going to be a little bit different. So obviously if the node is null, it's not gonna have a real balance factor here, so it's gonna be zero. Not a big deal. Otherwise, get height, it's gonna be node left, minus get height of node right. So the balance factor is the height of the left child minus the height of the right child. So if we want to, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I don't want this entire tree to work with because it's gonna eat up a whole lot of space. Um, honestly, I really like this TL draw extension. It's pretty nice. And it's completely open source, so I'm a huge fan of that. Um, how do I do the... So this. I have no idea how I'm doing this, but I'm doing it, and that's perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. So we have this tree. And we can get the balance factors to determine if this tree is balanced. So again, what we, I'm so sorry. What we do is get the height of the left child and we subtract the height of the right child from it. So on this, this bottom one here, its height on the left child is negative one, negative one, 
minus negative one, zero. So it has a balance factor of zero, not a big deal. This one is going to have a zero minus negative one, so it's gonna have one. Oops. So I'm gonna No, nah, I think I think I should be able to keep track of things. So this is gonna have balance factor of zero, balance factor of one. You should have a balance factor of zero. So we do zero minus one here for this one, which is negative one. So you have a balance factor of negative one. You're gonna have a balance factor of zero because you have no children. That's zero minus negative one which will be a balance factor of one. And then we end up here with one minus negative one, which is going to be, make sure I have this right. Zero minus negative one is one. One sec, oh, wait, 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 I'm doing, um, I see what I'm doing. Okay, <laughs> this is one minus two, not one minus negative one. I was subtracting balance factors, I'm so sorry. Uh, one minus two, that's going to be balance factor negative one. Okay, cool. So this is balanced. And the way that we can determine that it's balanced is because there are no twos or negative twos or anything outside the range of negative one, zero, and one. So it means that this is a balanced tree. And that's awesome. Real cool. I'm just going to create a new page, page three, and I'll like deleting everything. So that's how we get balance factors, not anything groundbreaking. Moving to the left and right rotations, that is going to be a little bit more of a nightmare. Uh, basically, we have a node being taken in, and then we create two nodes that we set up for rotations based on, for left rotates, we need the node's right child, and then we need the right child's left child. And then we're going to kind of restructure the pointers after that, we're going to reset the heights of the nodes that we're dealing with. So node and right are going to be readjusted, and then we're going to reset the actual original node. I have the slides that go over this, and then I'm going to do a visualization video that shows how this works. I, I guess I can go into a real quick, give me one sec, to find something so I don't mess up entirely. It can get really, really confusing on trying to keep track of things. So I just want to do a real quick example, a uh, very basic example essentially, once I find what I'm looking for. Let's see, I think it's right here on that. Right, 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 so I'm gonna look over here. I am definitely cheating right now. And it's just because I don't feel like stopping the video. <laughs> so not a big deal. Where is it at? Oh, that is one. Um. Is it gonna be, it's going to be in the last thing I'm looking for, of course. Dun, dun, dun. Here it is. Okay. Right. Well, I'm going to probably cut that out of the video. Not a big deal. So, anyway. Let's get back to that. I want to do very quick right left deletion. So we know it's a left right rotation. So we rotate right first and then we rotate left afterwards. It's kind of backwards the way it's actually listed. But essentially we want to get a sample of a tree. So I want this as 70. I want this as 80. I want this as a simple 75. Okay. So first things first, let's group these together. 
so that they know that they are nodes. Okay, so if we try and move them around, they'll uh, they'll follow. Okay, so let's just make sure that this works. Okay, what what are you doing? Why are you only extending out that far? That looks really bad. I don't like that. One sec. I don't know why it's doing that. Can I fix that? Well, I have no idea why it's doing that, but it looks like it keeps track of it properly. Yeah, I guess it does. That's okay. This one definitely does a lot better because it's actually connected to the node itself, but we'll work with it. Or we'll work with it. It'll be fine. So, first things first. Man, I hate that actually a lot. Um, we're going to do a right rotation first. So let's take a look over here. So, it's going to be a right rotation on node 80. So, we're going to rotate on this node first. It's going to be a two step rotation. So, basically, we need to set up left as node left. So node is going to equal 80. Node equals 80. Wow, that is not at all what I wanted. Left will equal node left, which is that. So left is equal to 75. Now this is not actually in setting it to the data. I'm just writing it down as reference to what they are hold will be null and that is null because we are getting the right child of left and if we take a look at it 75 is here the right child it doesn't exist it's not there so it's just going to be null and that is exactly what we want so when we do the actual rotation we're going to say hey left right I want you to point to node now so remember left right which is currently pointing to null, now is going to point to node. Left, right, I want to, um, man, I hope this is gonna work okay. Left, right, 75 points to 80, which is exactly what I want. And then I want node's left pointer to point to hold. So node's left pointer, that would be 80, is going to basically just get deleted. And then we have node equals left right here. So basically, uh, wow, no, no, this is gonna go away. Uh, not necessarily gonna go away, but you'll see what I mean. 75 is gonna be here. Wow, that did not work at all. Th that broke real quick. That goes there. This goes here. Can I do this and redraw it? And then there we go. So we end up with 70, 75, 80, and that's going to be our first deletion. So that is going to be our right rotation to try and fix our 70, 80, 75 that we had originally. Which, I mean, if you look at it, we had a uh, real quick 70 to 80 to 75 was our first step. And we end up with the 70, 75, 80. Well, this is still unbalanced. And again, I went through all of this in my actual slide video, which again will be linked. It'll probably be in the actual end cards of this video. But if you want to take a closer look at what I had, you can look over there. And then we need to do a left rotation on this to properly balance it. So what that is going to be is doing a left rotation on this 70. So let's take a look over here at left rotations. In which case we have kind of a similar setup, except for instead of left, we have right. Good. That setup. We're going to delete all this because it's going to be updated. Excuse me. So node's going to be 70 because we're rotating on that. Right child is 75. And then the I think left child of right, right, yeah, so right left. So we know the so hold is no. We're going to do rights, left child is going to be set to node. So rights, 
left pointer, right, will be set to node. So it's going to point back right there. We'll see if this breaks things. And then node's right pointer is going to be set to hold. So essentially, that goes away. And if we take a look at it, what we just did is made this so 75, 70, 80. And again, we will set this accordingly to where it needs to be in the tree. But that is going to be perfectly balanced. If we actually look at the balance factors here, we negative one minus negative one, which is zero. Negative one minus negative one is zero, and zero minus zero is zero, so perfectly balanced. So, not too bad. Again, I'm gonna apologize for some of the flubs I had. There's probably an intermission point uh, in between some of the rotation stuff. I had some technical difficulties, and this is still some new software so it's got some uh, bugs to work out maybe don't know but hopefully the transition won't be too terrible um, try and keep it as clean as I can but I digress so I kind of I kind of got ahead of myself doing that because the way that we determine all of this is based on balance tree so that is gonna be the function that does all the magic here this is the part that we call every single time we insert data or remove data that is going to be the auto balancing part of the ABL. First thing it does is it gets the balance factor of our node, then it determines is it greater than one, is it greater or less than negative one. So really what I should be doing here is an else if, but and it's okay. It's a little inoptimal, but it's fine. And then once we determine it's either greater than one or less than negative one we need to do a check on the children of it because depending on how these work out so if it's greater than one if it's two essentially and you have a left child of negative one or somehow negative two that means you're gonna have a two-step deletion like we just had if you don't, then you're going to have a one-step deletion and you just call right rotate. But what we did was actually this bottom one here, we had a balance factor of negative two, and then its right child had a balance factor of one. So we need to call right rotate, and then we need to call left rotate afterwards, and that's how we ended up here. I mean, we could actually take a look at that. So negative one minus negative one, zero, zero minus negative one, zero minus negative one so I do this every time I hate saying minus negative one it's so so dumb but one and then zero that's negative one minus one negative two so we'll get it we had negative two for our balance of the node and then we said get balance factor of the right child and if it's greater than zero which it is then we need to do Sorry. Since it was one, so we had negative two, then one. We need to do a right rotate, and then finally left rotate. And that's exactly what we just got done doing. So that's how the balance works. And that's how we end up doing our rotations. That's the magic of the AVL, which keeps us having a perfectly balanced binary tree at all times, binary search tree. That. And then the rest of this is just gonna be find and then the post in and pre-order. So not a whole lot going on there. I'm gonna yeah, don't save any of that. It's it's really nice, it's very early stage, so it's it's got some bugs to work out. Um, but it's okay. I like it, it's functional, and it I think it's I think it's good overall. By digress. So here we have a main quest, not my not main quest, just the main file, main function. Not too much. So we just initiate an AVL here of A because I do very script names when I'm doing sample and stuff like that. So essentially we're going to insert a 10, then we're going to insert a 20, insert a 30, insert a zero, and then remove a 30. So at some point, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call pre-order every single time I do this. Because pre-order 
does a really good job at showing when data is being altered because you're going to call the nodes first. So if you ever notice that you begin differently, that means your root actually changed, which means it can only, it only the root can only change if A, you deleted everything in the tree and made a new root, or you had to rotate the tree and the root got affected by that rotation. So real quick, let's just go to the terminal, do the old usual, call my executable, and let's take a look. So we start and we end up with this 10. 1020, nothing's changed, that means it's still balanced. And then the moment that we enter 30, we now have a 10 at the top going to a 20. Let's see, 10. You guys would be left, you have 20, and then we had 30, and now you notice that this line is going to be out of balance. So then we just change it from 20, uh, 30, and then I think a 10 over here. I think this should be the correct orientation for you guys. But essentially, this is a pre order output. You can tell that the root changed because the tree got out of balance. So you can actually see the rotation happening here. And then the 20, 10, 30, that's fine. It's in balance, not a big deal. But then the moment that we do this, where we remove 30, you can tell that it got heavier on the left side because the only thing that was on the right side was 30. So it had to rebalance itself. So now we have a 10, with a zero and a 20. So that's gonna be our new tree. Again, there's gonna, I'm gonna go over visual visualization uh, I'm going to do these exact inputs during the visualization so you can see exactly how this works. I'm going to do the insertions, 10, 20, 30, 0, calling pre-order every single time so you can actually watch what's happening during this main function live and I hope that actually does illustrate exactly what's happening. So we'll do the actual visualization video very soon after I get done recording and editing this video. but. Hopefully this code review did help you learn something, showed how the actual code works for AVLs. It's not really easy. I mean, if it is easy for you, that's fantastic. If it's not easy for you to understand what's happening here and all the recursion, all the balancing and everything happening simultaneously, that's perfectly fine. AVLs are honestly fairly complex. They are a step above binary search trees, which in nature are recursive non-linear data structures which are going to be inherently more difficult than say stacks or queues or linked list just in terms of comprehension because we like to think things linearly but the moment we start branching things out it can be a little bit difficult to comprehend exactly what's happening especially as things start to grow it can be very difficult to keep up with that and adding another layer of complexity to have it constantly be kind of rearranging itself and morphing to a more consistent pattern can be pretty difficult to keep up with so hopefully if you actually do anything with ABLs, you can analyze the rotations and see how the binary search tree reacts to specific points of data being added and removed. And you can analyze the patterns of when something is going to be out of balance. It takes some practice. Un understandably, it takes a lot of practice. And then if you have a hard time following specifically the rotations, Sorry, I'm actually scrolling through to find the rotations. Um, one sec. Yeah, the left rotate and right rotate with all these nodes. If this is difficult. Believe me, illustrating that is also very difficult. So it, it takes some time. It takes some practice. But it's not impossible. And if you get discouraged at first, don't worry about it. It's it's just not simple. It's just, it's just not. So... If it feels difficult, that's, that's the kind of it is. So, hope it doesn't discourage you. And again, the whole point, I do really hope you guys learned something. And that'll be it for me for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later.